Well, thanks for joining me, students. And today I have as my very special guest, all the way from New York, Judge Alex Calabresi, who is the presiding judge at the Red Hook Community Justice Centre. Judge Alex, thanks for joining me. It's great to be here. It's an honour to be here. So what exactly is a community court and how did Red Hook come about? Red Hook came about because Life magazine in 1988 called us one of the top 10 crack infested communities in the United States. But that really wasn't, uh, wasn't enough to, to motivate the court system. Uh, December 17, 1992, our school principal left school to bring a young person back who had, who had run away from school, got caught in a crossfire between two drug gangs and was killed gave us national and international attention as a drug-ridden urban war zone. And the statistics, the crime statistics that came out of Red Hook were just horrific. And people all of a sudden started paying attention to an area where there was gunfire in the streets. And you actually put your kids to bed in the bathtub when nights were particularly bad. Very, very rough area. Um, our court system saw what was happening, not only in Red Hook, but that people were recycling through their court system on low-level cases, really not getting the help they need and constant recycling through the court system. And they said, uh, community courts need to do a better job here. So they created community courts to address the issue. Um, and they basically told us, produce better results than our traditional court system. And, and how does your court at Red Hook um, differ from a normal run-of-the-mill everyday court? You know, Rob, it's interesting. It, it, it just makes common sense. We say it's not rocket science. You try to figure out what brought the offender to court, address that issue, so you stop them recycling through the court system. You get help them get their lives back on track. If it's drug or alcohol issues, mental health issues, connect them with services, monitor services very carefully. Um, and really, at the end, you've produced a person who now can be successful in the community rather than constantly come back through the court system time and time again. And having all those services in the one building on site with the court, does that make a difference to uh, turning people's lives around? It makes a tremendous difference that we can connect them immediately to, to services. But uh, also it makes a difference is the, the whole court approach is that you understand that anyone who comes through your doors, whether they brought in the, they walk in the front door, they're brought in by the police to what we call the back door after arrest, they're part of your community before they have a case, while the case is pending, and when the case is over. And when you take that approach, you want them to be successful. We're not like a court where you walk in and, okay, they can prove this charge, this charge, they can't prove this charge, here's your sentence. We're a court that says, we want you to be successful. You walk into the justice system, justice center, you walk into the NJC, the court that you established. It is a great court. There's a feeling that they, they want people to be successful. Whole different approach, significantly better results. And what about uh, those people out there who say, oh, this sounds good, but it's really soft on crime. It's a soft approach. It's really a bunch of people sitting around holding hands, singing Kumbaya. <laughs> uh, what, what do you say to them? Well, first of all, when they actually see what we do, or they see us in action, they see that we hold people accountable, that we make sure they're doing everything they need to do, that we don't end the case until they're doing what they need to do successfully and on track to get their lives back on track. But more importantly, just speak to our police department. Our police department, who gets evaluated on crime statistics, they love working with the Justice Center. Why? Because our evaluation, much like the NJC, uh, shows that we reduce crime statistically significantly, reduce recidivism while reducing incarceration. We're not locking people up, we're working with them, but we're making sure they're doing what they need to do. So the crime statistics are great, the savings for taxpayers are in the millions of dollars, it's the only way to do this. Well, as you said, it's, uh, it's certainly not rocket science. What, what about the future of therapeutic and restorative justice more generally, both in America and more broadly around the world? I think people are seeing that it works, that it produces better results, which means they're willing to go down the road. Uh, and it just makes sense. It just makes common sense, as you said. For community courts, there are 50 in the United States. There are 20 in planning they are about to open. In, uh, outside of the United States, there are seven in existence, there are six in planning. And what happens is one jurisdiction sees another jurisdiction being successful and all of a sudden they want to open up. Two, for example, opened up in Israel. All of a sudden those pilot projects were so success successful they're opening up four more across the country. So it's, it's expanding very rapidly. The interesting thing is in putting those numbers together for my presentations here in Melbourne, the emails went back and forth because they just kept adding courts. They said, wait a second, this court, that court, that's how quickly it's expanding. So it's a growing movement. We, yes. we have um, a whole range of students, in particular law students, JD students, watching this and um, they'll be hearing about Red Hook and the Neighbourhood Justice Centre and a different way of doing justice. If you had one or two bits of advice for our students, what would it be, Alex? I would say you've got to think out of the box. And right now, Rob, the, the box is the traditional court approach to to justice. Yes, on the high level cases, 
uh, murder, robbery, rape, you're going to do the traditional approach if they can prove it, if they can't prove it, and incarceration is almost certainly, most of the time in those cases, exactly what's desirable. But on most of the cases that come through the court system, you just got to be able to figure out what's the cause of this person? How can we help that person not reoffend? And that produces a better result for the person, but it produces a better result for the community. And that's where you have to unfortunately think out of the box, because the court system is very rigid, and, and they move very, very slowly, and they love to say, well, we, this is the way we've always done it. But then just ask them, you know, what kind of results have you always gotten? Well, look at your recidivism rate. The traditional court system, it's really pretty bad. It's almost horrific that you're incarcerating people, because incarceration is criminogenic. Jail producing more jail. All of a sudden, if you could stop that, speak to a person not as a person, it's not as a DACA number, work with that person, monitor that person, you get significantly better results. Better results for the person, better for the court, better for the community, better for the police, and victims truly appreciate it. Alex, it's been a pleasure uh, meeting you again after all these years. Thanks very much for joining me. It's an honor to, meet, to see you again. You did great work. Great advice, students. Think outside the square. Therapeutic, restorative justice can make a difference to people's lives. You can be part of it. Thanks for joining me.